Hello, I'm TMN, and welcome to today's movie review. Ah, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The film which makes people say, that's what that song's from. I don't think any child could go through adolescence without hearing the theme song from the good, the bad, and the ugly at least once in their life. But it can't possibly be just the theme song that makes this movie good or memorable. Surely there must be something in it that makes it stand out as one of the top 10 best films of all time. And today, I'm here to find out. This is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Oh, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. What a classic treasure you are. Much as I do enjoy Fistful of Dollars and For a Few Dollars More, nothing in them really catches my interest enough to make me watch it a second time. Once I finish watching them, I'm done, you know, never want to come back. This movie, on the other hand, I could watch countless times and never get bored. And despite running roughly three hours, it is still a great film. We'll just put you down nice and gently there. Now, this film, as with the other Dology Trilogy films, stars Clint Eastwood in the role of Blondie, a nickname given to him by the supporting actor in this film, Eli Wallach, who plays Tuco. Now, granted, I don't really know why he nicknames him Blondie. His hair sure doesn't look blonde to me, but, I don't know, whatever, maybe I'm colorblind. But, odd name choices aside, this is one of the most enjoyable character relationships you will ever see in any film. Red and Andy from Shawshank Redemption is a great example of a good relationship in a film, but that's more on a friendship level. Tuco and Blondie's relationship is more like a always-at-their-throats, uneasy alliance, laugh-out-loud hilarious kind of relationship. Simply put, the basic story of this film is that a guy named Bill Carson has hidden a bunch of gold in a remote cemetery in an unmarked grave. Tuco knows where the cemetery is, but he doesn't know the name on the grave. And Blondie knows the name on the grave, so they have to work together to find the cemetery to get the gold in the grave. This film also stars Lee Van Cleef as the main villain of the film, Angel Eyes. And of course, while Blondie plays the good, and Tuco plays the ugly, Angel Eyes plays the bad, despite ironically killing the least amount of people in the entire film. That credit actually goes to the good. And throughout the majority of this movie, the race is on to see who can get the gold first. Now, all of the performances are great in this movie, but Eli Wallach takes it out of the park with his performance as Tuco. Imagine if you could take a weasel, transform it into a human that understood English language, mind you, and that's pretty much Tuco's character. He always seems to have this crazy look of desperation in his eyes, and yet at the same time, with a snap of his fingers, he can turn around and be completely insane at the same time. He's a great provider of comic relief, but when he wants to get things done, he gets things done. He's a man you don't want to double cross, a lesson which Blondley learns very well. And Clint Eastwood's performance is good too. But again, as with the other films, he basically plays the same role. He has very little dialogue, and most of his performance is based on his eye squinting and his overall intimidating presence. But of course, that doesn't make the good's relationship with the ugly any less boring. And of course, Cleese's performance is good too. As I said in my last review, that nose is one of the things that makes him such a great villain. And he can still be very menacing too. And of course, as is tradition with these Dollar Trilogy reviews, I've got to talk about Mario Brega's performance, simply so I can show off how his character dies in this one. In this film, he's in the army. Because, you see, the good, the bad, and the ugly takes place during the Civil War. And even though the war itself doesn't really have a huge impact on the story, it does appear throughout the movie at certain times. And there is one instance where Tuco and Blondie's character become POWs, and while there, they meet Angel Eyes, they all learn about their pursuit of the gold, and then after a savage beating of Tuco's character by Mario Brega's character, trying to find out exactly where the gold is, Tuco and Blondie's character are then separated briefly while Mario Brega's character takes Tuco on a train to another POW camp? I'm not really sure, I don't really remember. But long story short, Tuco pushes Brega off the train and... Woohoo! Violent! And if you've seen my other two reviews, you probably know what I'm gonna say about the rest of the acting. Good, but, you know, for the time, it's about what you would expect. But still, overall, Wallach is definitely the best. And now on to the score. Oh, and Neo Morricone. Do you think he knew when he was writing this score that he was gonna be creating something iconic? Or do you think he was just like, oh, well, this sounds good, but you know, whatever. Do you ever think composers just know when they're creating something iconic? Finally, 
I, Elmer Bernstein, have come up with a theme song for The Great Escape. No one's probably going to remember it in ten years' time, but well, whatever. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean, what theme? Yeah, the score for The Good, The Bad, The Ugly is definitely the top notch of the entire Drawlers trilogy. Drawlers trilogy. What a moron. Not only does it have an extremely catchy theme song, but it also has other pretty good tracks laid throughout. Some of my personal favorites are Story of a Soldier, The Ecstasy of Gold, and The Trio. Personally, Ecstasy of Gold has always been one of my favorites. And it only plays near the end of the movie, but it is well worth the wait. I'm always surprised that despite the fact that Ennio Morricone has composed so many scores that he's never won a single Oscar except for 2015 when he won for The Hateful Eight. And even so, that wasn't even one of his better scores in my opinion. It could be because it's a foreign film and whatnot, but he really should have been nominated for Good, Bad, and the Ugly. It's a really enjoyable score, it fits the movie so well. It's stuck with people for generations upon generations. Like I said at the beginning of the review, it's usually the first thing people notice about the film. So yeah, no complaints about a Neo Morricone score, it's great. Next topic. Now, one might go into this film thinking, a three hour movie about three guys just looking for gold? Boring! But trust me, there is a lot more to the story than just that. I think what makes this film so great is that it engages the audience as if they are one of the characters. Throughout this film, there are many instances where the two main characters are getting so close to the goal, but then at the last second, they keep getting delayed by different things. And at first, you as the audience are just thinking, Oh, what a conundrum! But then, when it gets to the scene where they're about to cross the bridge, and they once again get caught up in the Civil War, you as the audience member are thinking, Oh, just get to the goal! And I think it's the three hour runtime that makes it so much more satisfying when they finally get to the cemetery and they have that final showdown between the good, the bad, and the ugly to see who gets the gold overall. And overall, this film isn't about the destination, it's about the journey. Words to live by. Of course, maybe it's not all the side trips that take place in this film that makes it so long. Maybe it's just the director Sergio Leone's use of really long close-up shots. I mean, what I'm about to react is pretty much the first shot of the entire movie. Cut. Cut. Stop rolling. And given that that is Leone's trademark, you can guarantee there's going to be a lot of that throughout the movie. A lot of long, drawn-out shots are featured in this film, and if you don't have a very high attention span, you're probably going to be disinterested in this movie pretty quickly. But I seriously urge you to continue watching because it is well worth the three hours. Just to put into perspective of how good this movie is, the first time I watched it was in a hotel on TV. Now, me and my family were on a road trip and we'd pretty much been driving all day, so by the time we got to the hotel it was maybe 9 o'clock or so, so obviously we would have naturally just gone to bed straight away. But of course, we were scrolling through the channels and we came across The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, and it was only about 20 minutes in. And I think at the beginning of things, we were only going to watch maybe a little bit and then turn it off. But this movie is so good that I think we ended up staying up until maybe 11.30 just to finish the film. That's right, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly is a film that makes people say, Screw sleep! Although it's probably not a good tagline for the movie. And then of course, later on down the line, I bought it on Blu-ray. And I finally got to see the movie in its entirety. Now, I've seen a lot of people review this movie online. Whether they're talking about why Good and the Bad the Ugly is so good or something like that. And I could probably say I agree with most of it. So I'm not going to go too much into what I think is so great about this movie because I'm sure someone else has probably already done it and I don't really want to waste your guys' time. My reviewing quirk is that I talk about the acting, the music, and that's pretty much it. Hey, you gotta stand out somehow. But overall, this movie has great performances taught by Eli Wallach, a great soundtrack by Ennio Morricone. It is extremely large in scale. You watch this film and you feel like you've been transported to the West. And even though I'm not reviewing the Blu-ray, the picture quality is still very good. Overall, it's a film I highly recommend checking out. If you're not a big fan of Westerns, check it out anyway. Maybe you'll find one that you actually like. There's a lot of stuff that happens in this movie, but it's all for a good reason. Whether it's to develop the characters or their backstories better, it all ties together very well at the end. And without a doubt, I can definitely give The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly a rating of... Wow. 
Well guys, that's about it for today's movie review. Be sure to tune in Friday for my review of Fight Club. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, click on that little bell icon to be notified whenever I post. Leave a comment down below telling me your thoughts on the film. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. And as always, subscribe. I'm TMN. Until next time.